in Taipei to talk about all of the new innovations that we have. This industry is an incredible industry with tremendous transformation. And as we look at what has happened over the past five years, it's nothing like what the next five years are going to be for us. So today, what I'd like to do is introduce a little bit about AMD's mission and strategy and how we're transforming the company, and most importantly, talk about our 2013 product portfolio. It is the best product portfolio that we've had at AMD in our life, and we very much want to share with you some of the exciting products and some of the new innovations. So let me start first with our mission. If you think about what's happening in the computing industry, Really, there's tremendous transformation. You see it in new form factors, new devices, new user experiences, and AMD as a company has always represented technology innovation. And technology innovation for us is about being the leading designer and integrator of new and innovative solutions, both for current form factors and for new form factors that we haven't really even imagined. And when you think about our vision for where computing is going, it is really about enabling surround computing. It's about enabling us to get our data and our devices anywhere, anytime, any place connected and being able to see that through mobile devices, through our compute devices and through our living room and through our cloud. And with that, AMD's focus is really on enabling those next generation user experiences. So if you look today throughout our show, you will see many new products that focus not only on the computing capability, but on the user experience, on facial recognition, gesture recognition, speech recognition, new biometric capability. And this is really the future of where we're going in computing. Now, what is our technology? Our technology is really about the APU. AMD invented the APU category. The APU is really the future of computing. If you think about what was the computing five years ago, traditional computing has really changed. And it is really now about how do we put together the best balanced architecture between our CPU architecture and GPU architecture to really do next generation workloads. So not only is it important for gaming, which is very, very, very key to AMD, but you look at the ability to accelerate compute, the ability to accelerate video, imaging, this is really what's coming together and being enabled by the APU. The fact of the matter is, we are committed to this technology. This year we're talking about our third generation Richland APU. You can see over 40% of our die is dedicated to graphics, and our competitor has been following. And the truth is, they're continuing to follow. This is our strategy, and this is the future of computing for the next 10 years. Now, how do we really expand when we look at how the world is changing? It is really the tremendous IP portfolio that we have. In the center of the universe, of course, is our CPU and graphics cores, and that is really key to our strategy. But you can see a tremendous amount of new IP that needs to be integrated, including multimedia, image processing, video processing, including the entire ecosystem as we move from Microsoft into Android and Linux and Chrome as the total ecosystem. So AMD is really expanding our portfolio of IP and our portfolio of solutions going forward. We have had some very, very good news over the past couple of months. When we look at our growth strategy, we see that this IP and this capability really allow us to go into several different growth segments. We start with, of course, the new client form factors and all of these wonderful products that we see here today. Matt's going to talk about our graphics strategy and our graphics leadership. We also announced last week our low-power, dense server leading x86, the first x86 um, really strong uh, small core. And we also have the opportunity to do embedded and semi-custom solutions. With our IP, we're able to deliver really new and innovative APU solutions. And some of the new design wins that we've shown are the Sony PlayStation 4. We are extremely proud to be working with Sony for their next generation game console. The reason they chose AMD is really the combination of our processor IP, our next generation Radeon graphics, our ability to customize that new architecture. And this is really the future of where we're going in terms of new applications. Earlier this month, we also announced the Microsoft Xbox One is using AMD APU technology. And although 
these companies are in the same market space, these are different custom solutions using IP blocks that are able to really get the future of next generation gaming and next generation entertainment. So you can see all of the applications that this IP can really be used for. Now, let's move on to the 2013 products. The 2013 product lineup is a truly outstanding product lineup. Our entire AMD team is extremely proud of where we are. When we look at graphics, mainstream, ultra-thin tablets, every one of these products is satisfying a really new user experience. And we launched the Richland, Cabini, and Tamash stack for Notebook earlier this month, and we have a number of form factors for you to look at here today. And I'm also going to give you a preview of our fourth generation APU in terms of Kaveri. So the message from AMD is our product portfolio is strong and we're executing very, very well to our products. Now, what's happening in the marketplace? It's clear that the PC market is fundamentally changing. When we look at what's happening, we have traditional notebooks, which are still extremely important. It's a large market segment. But you really see that there, the growth is actually coming in these convergence and new form factors. So the key is, how do we provide something for the user that's different from what they can achieve today? And it's really bridging this gap between media tablets, which are currently consumption tablets, and really not only used for viewing um, information, and traditional notebooks, which are very powerful, but also more power hungry and more um, not as portable. This new set of convergence form factors is what we at AMD are focused on. And it's about tablets, it's about hybrids, it's about small screen touch notebooks. This is where we see the growth in the PC market over the next few years. So, about the products. Kabini. Kabini is the industry's first quad-core SOC that is really being shipped in production. At the opening price point in the mainstream, it has incredible power performance capability. We have increased the graphics, the first graphics core next in a notebook form factor. The integrated SOC gives us great battery life in these form factors, and we can reach a broad capability. So less than $500 price points, you will see many of the OEMs introducing new systems here at the show and also going into um, the uh, summer season. When you look at the battery life, getting up to over 10 hours of battery life, you really have a tremendous capability there. Now, moving on to Tomash. You heard Spencer talk about Tomash. We're very proud that Tomash won Computex's Best of Show. It is really an honor to have that from uh, such a distinguished uh, conference. Tomash is really focused on those new form factors. When you think about the difference between traditional notebooks and media tablets, this is the no compromise solution. We have the ability in less than 13 inch touch tablets, hybrids, and convertibles to give you tremendous capability in terms of graphics at very low power. Less than 10 watts in quad core, less than 5 watts in, um, in dual core, and in fanless devices as well. So there are a number of new devices I wanted to show you a few of them. Let me start first with the um, Acer Aspire. Acer announced this form factor actually earlier this month. It's a beautiful machine. If you look at it, full Windows 8 Touch. Less than $500 with A4 and A6 Kamash capability. We're very proud of our work with Acer and what we've been doing with this form factor. And they are the first to launch with Tamash. You will see many others from some of our other OEMs in the coming weeks. The second new form factor here was just announced at Computex. This is an MSI 11.6 inch tablet, less than 10 millimeter. You know, once again, full Windows 8 capability. And the key here is that these are form factors that are being enabled in the performance tablet category that are significantly different from today's media tablets and give us you know, great capability. And these will be up for you to take a look at later on um, in the press conference. 
We are also able to announce that working with Microsoft, we work very, very closely, and the um, Acer machine is actually running Windows 8.1, so the first Windows Blue system that is being announced. Actually, a little bit, uh, Microsoft will be demonstrating that later this uh, later today at their event. So, really, you know, great partnership with Microsoft in terms of Windows 8 capability and these new form factors. Okay, our third APU is Richland. Richland is at the top. It's our elite APU. And what we have here is really a combined great graphics experience as well as compute in a performance APU. And here we take some of the very key features of the tablet where we have um, less than two second wake up and boot as well as those elite experiences. So we have the capability to actually bundle with our software providers facial recognition as well as gesture control this is something that's unique to what we can do with our APUs, and particularly around our high-end A8 and A10 brand. At this performance level, we are seeing battery life over 10 hours. So truly, battery life has gotten to a different level in terms of these performance APUs. Very pleased with where Richland is in our um, stack. Now, we're at Computex, so we have to talk about something new. Uh, today, we have actually launched for the first time our 2013 Elite A series in the desktop. It seemed really, really important since we're here in Taiwan, the heart of the computing industry, to launch the desktop version of Richland, and it's going into a number of different um, capabilities. If you look at Richland and desktop, we're very proud of what we're doing here. First of all, in terms of compute, leadership compute at over 700 gigaflops. 700 gigaflops in a desktop form factor. Also enabled with our AMD Radeon HD 8000 capability, excellent graphics integrated together with our compute performance. And most importantly, we understand this market. This is where AMD grew up in the desktop, and it is really about promoting the FM2 motherboard and the FM2 ecosystem. So we started first with Trinity. It's fully compatible with Richland. And you'll see that FM2 will be the platform that we use in desktop together with all of the other technology that we have within AMD going forward. So we're very pleased with um, the ability to offer Richland uh, starting today. Now, let's take a look at the benchmarks for Richland. There's been a lot of discussion about what are the most important benchmarks in the market. And of course, the most important benchmark is what we deliver to the customer. It is the user experience. Mm -hmm. But there are al always ways to compare our processors against other processors. And in this particular case, I'm very proud of this capability. If you looked at uh, previous generations of um, PC benchmarks, particularly PC Mark 7, they really were tra traditional benchmarks that didn't really utilize the full capability of the APU. And as a result, what you would see is sometimes a large difference between AMD and our competition. What you see in PC Mark 8 that is just being launched is on the productivity benchmark of the home, comparing against Haswell, the new introduction from our competitor, that the AMD A10 performs very, very well in terms of PC Mark 8. This is really on parity in terms of the um, compute performance here. And of course, we really crush the competition when it comes to graphics. In 3D Mark, we're showing up to a 50% improvement over the Haswell Core i5 capability. <laughs> so in Richland, we have a tremendous balance between really the strength of an APU, where we have integrated CPU and graphics. Utilizing OpenCL, we're able to get very, very good equivalent performance and productivity, and we just really have a tremendous advantage in terms of graphics capability. So 